are you buying designs online and they are not working properly with X tool create space? Or you need more ideas to up your game using your X tool P2? You are in luck because today we are going to create acrylic keychains from start to finish using the X tool P2. Hola, my name is Betsy, and today we're going to go through materials, settings, and a lot of tips and tricks to use your X tool P2. Let's go to my studio and get started. Welcome to X tool Create Space, where we will design our unique keychain. To follow along, I will provide the names of the fonts I used. Before opening XCS, ensure you have installed these fonts or any other fonts you prefer in your computer. These fonts can be used to recreate similar keychains. It's important to make your project unique to you. Your computer's fonts can also be used for this project and will work just as well. This project has various fonts, including scripts, sans serif, and handwritten fonts. I select these fonts based on the names I am using, uh, aiming to have a diverse range. Please note that if you intend to use these fonts for commercial purposes, it's crucial to purchase them. Before starting our design, I like to name and save my project. XCS has local and cloud-based formats in which you can save your project. For this presentation, I am saving it on my computer, on my computer, and save often to keep the most refreshed project version. So let's select the um, text box, write the name, and I'm using the layer blue and change the typeface. For this, go to the right toolbar and click under the typeface title. A few of the fonts of your computer will show, and if you want one specific, start writing that specific font, and it's going to show up among all the typefaces or all that you have in your computer. You can scroll down and see one by one, but by typing the specific font, it's going to be faster. I am using the font Candy. <laughs> Our keychain will have two layers. The name will be the top layer and the back layer will be created by adding an outline or shadow. For this feature, hover to the top toolbar and select the outline button. Now slide the learner to the right and create an outline that covers the name completely without any holes in the center of the name and in a way that will protect the name and serve as a base for our keychain. I think that looks good like that. And as, as soon as you're done, don't forget to click OK. Now let's add the loop for our keychain. Before going to the next steps, let's adjust the size of the keychain. I would like it to be around 3 inches long. This is a personal preference and you can adjust these measurements depending on the name length. Okay, almost done. Let's duplicate the name. The name inside the outline will be scored and the name outside the outline will be the second top layer that will add. So let's change the processing type of both of them. The score name inside the outline will serve as a guide to glue or adhere to the top layer. And with this technique, we will avoid any tilted or incorrect spacing between the letters. As my preference, I like to name my layers by processing type. And uh, remember to save your project update. To utilize 
uh, this as a keychain, we must now incorporate a loop into our base. So let's add a circle with dimensions of about a quarter of an inch or 0.25 inches. And to keep the circle dimensions even, keep the shift key pressed on your keyboard. Add an outline to that circle. These are the same steps that I discussed before. Create the outer nail circle. Now we're going to combine that outer circle to the base of the keychain. And to do this, select the base and the outer circle. And from the top toolbar, hover over the combine button and select the unite option. It is an easy thing. Finally, select the inner circle and the outer base, hover to the combine button again, and select subtract at overlap. <laughs> Our keychain is ready to cut. Now we're going to go to the process of checking the settings for the scoring and the settings for the cut and arrange our images depending on the acrylic colors that we are used. And I decided to add another layer to change the colors of the top cut to ensure that I don't get confused when I need to change the acrylic colors. You can cut both of these pieces at the same time inside the x 2 p 2 because the bed is pretty big. I'm going to do it uh, in separate um, parts and I'm going to create another keychain with the same steps and to be able to cut both at the same time. So I'm going to um, fast forward this process because you already saw what I did here. Before sending our image to cut, I will briefly show you one of my best finds to glue acrylic pieces faster. This adhesive needs to be added before cutting, so let me show you next. This is a type of adhesive that you uh, apply to the back of your acrylic or wood if you're using wood, and it's going to cut with it, and you just need to remove the backing and glue your item. This adhesive is a little costly. <laughs> so if you are making a lot of kitchens, this is a, one of the things that you can add to your cost to create, um, to be faster with your processing. Um, if you are not using something like this, you need to find an adhesive that is not going to change the color of your acrylic if you're using transparent acrylic because it's going to show in front of the acrylic. So that's something to take in consideration when you are going to glue your acrylic. So I'm gonna use this in one of the keychains so you know how it works and the process um, and how easy it is to put together. But as I said before, this is gonna cost a little bit more. So for this acrylic, because I'm using this adhesive, I cut in half my sheet of acrylic. We'll add this. Here, so what is this backing is that it has a adhesive in between the two uh, protective um, parts. If I can take this out. You can see it. See, there's an adhesive there. And this is the part you're going to put over your acrylic. So it's there. Now we can cut our names 
on this side. Remember, this is the one that I'm going to use for the top of the uh, key chain. So this is the one that I'm going to apply the adhesive to. With this one, let me see how it looks like. It is so pretty. And to cut this acrylic, I'm going to loop the backing. Look at this. How pretty is this? You got a close up so you can see how pretty this look like. So we're gonna fill the backing of our first kitchen with this one and the name with this. Place the acrylic in the XOP2 and secure it with the material pins. Make sure the material is completely flat against the slats. And you can also use the honeycomb. The pink material or the pink acrylic with the adhesive that we just added is going to be the top layer. In other words, it's going to cut the names only. To save on cuts and proper placement, I highly recommend to use the Capture Close View camera located at the top toolbar. Place a camera where you can see your image and arrange your image as close to the corner as possible. So we're ready to cut, select the image to adjust uh, the cut settings. I am using an 80% power and 10% speed. Always test your material as these settings might vary depending on your machine and stat, um, setup and the image that you're coding, or the type of material that you are using. And our top cut is ready. It took two minutes and 19 seconds to cut the um, names. These are gonna be two key chains at the adhesive, and are gonna be the top layer of our key shades. This is a preview of the cut. It starts. Send it to the machine and the, I push the button on the machine and it's cutting right now. I use the same settings to cut these acrylic colors, 80% power and 10% speed. I only needed a faint light for the scoring mark and I used an 8% power and 175% speed. It took two minutes and seven seconds to process two cuts of the backing of our keychains. Next, we're going to put our together and I'm going to show you more other um, styles that I also made with everything that I just showed you. Regardless of the type of adhesive you choose, the process remains the same. So I show you my super cool adhesive method, right? It's like the ultimate shortcut. All I do is peel up the backing of that sticky stuff and bam, I place it exactly where I want it on the cut surface. And guess what? The scoring outline is like my built-in guide. It helps me light up the letters perfectly so they don't end up all wonky or tilted. A script font is usually easier to use because it has fewer pieces versus a handwritten font is one in which I needed to glue each letter one by one.
this project is simply enough for anyone to make adorable keychains. I enjoy making keychains from my nieces and added tassels and small details for a personal touch. I even made a one letter monogram keychain for myself. Be sure to follow our great inspirations and theaters on social media for more project ideas. Thanks for watching and see you soon.